Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Welcome to our annual awards banquet. Tonight, we recognize great junior league accomplishments. None of this would be possible without the support of our wonderful sponsors, who each in their own way have demonstrated a significant commitment to the Junior League. Not all of them are here tonight, but I invite those who are to come up on the stage when I call out your organization's name. Colgate. Lincoln. One Kings Lane, Digital Cheetah, and Mercer. Your support of our organization and steadfast belief in the importance of women's civic leadership is invaluable, and we are thrilled that you're here with us this evening. I would also like to thank the Junior League of Los Angeles, President Courtney Garvin, and her annual conference. And I would like to invite Courtney and her annual conference city site committee to join me on stage. On behalf of the AJLI Board of Directors, the AJLI staff, and the conference attendees, I thank you for your hospitality and all of your hard work to make the 93rd Annual Conference a smashing success. We have so enjoyed being with you. Tonight, we are also fortunate to have a number of our past AJLI leaders here with us. They're here for a special gathering, lending us their time and talent as we guide our organization into its next chapter. So could I ask the past AJLI governance leaders who are here with us tonight to stand and be recognized, please? Thank you all so much for being here with us this weekend. And one final note before we start dinner. We have six finalists of the Junior League Altruette Charm Challenge. Beginning May 1st, all Junior League members can vote online for the winning design, which will be announced and available for sale at Fall Leadership in New Orleans, September 17 to 19. Just in time for holiday shopping. AJLI will receive 10% of every charm sold, so keep your eyes peeled for voting information and make sure to have your voice heard. Okay, we have a lot of awards to hand out this evening. I'm sure you're absolutely famished, so let's enjoy dinner now, and members of the AJLI board and I will be back during dessert to recognize a number of amazing deserving leagues. See you later.
And now... Time to start our awards presentations. The highlight of this evening. Thank you. Through our annual awards program, HLI celebrates the outstanding accomplishments and significant contributions junior leagues make both within their leagues and in their communities. Tonight, we celebrate the enterprising efforts of several leagues to develop strong civic leaders and to solve their community's toughest and most urgent problems. And we honor their commitment to enthusiastically living the Junior League's vision of women around the world as catalysts for lasting community change. So let's get started. I'm now going to turn things over to Tony Freeman, the Rising Star Committee Chair and immediate past president of AJLI. Thank you very much, Alan. So as you know from yesterday's luncheon, the Mary Harriman Community Leadership Award celebrates individual members who have lived a lifetime of achievement. On the other end of the spectrum, the Rising Star Award recognizes and celebrates our league's emerging leaders. Before announcing them, I would like to thank our esteemed panel of judges for which I had the privilege to serve as chair. All are past HLI board members, and you should know we had a really challenging time selecting the recipients from among the distinctive and diverse pool of candidates proposed for this award. We want to thank all the junior leagues that submitted a candidate for the Rising Star Award. It was an inspiration to us to learn about the promise of our next generation of leaders who have taken our mission to heart. Our judges were Liz Davis, past HLI Director at Large and a member of the Junior League of Olympia, who is present here tonight. Liz, will you stand? Our other panelists couldn't be here, but I want to make sure you know who they are. Karen Miller, past HLI Director at Large and a member of the Junior League of Evanston North Shore. Diane Rohde, past HLI Area 1 Director and a member of the Junior League of the City of New York. And Kathy Raybon, past HLI Secretary and member of the Junior League of Clearwater Deedon. Unlike the other award winners who will be celebrated tonight, the Rising Stars have already been notified that they've won because part of their prize is being here at the conference. In addition to that opportunity, each league of a Rising Star winner receives a cash award of $3,500 to further train emerging leaders. Isn't that incredible? We select up to two winners annually, and indeed this year we are honoring two women who embody the significant promise and untapped potential consistent with the vision and values of the Junior League mission. A portion of this year's awards has been generously funded by a sitting member of the HLI board who wishes to remain anonymous. We thank her for her generous and generosity and investment in the future of civic Women, women Civic Leadership. So, let's meet our 2015 Rising Stars. I'm going to ask you to hold your applause until after I share the stories of both winners. 
With a commitment to her strong and widespread bonds in her community, her status as a uber volunteer and her gift for national, uh, natural leadership, Karen Riley has been an invaluable asset since she arrived at the Junior League of Baltimore. Her key initiatives have been to re reinvigorate the Pennywise Internship Committee, which works with disadvantaged women seeking retail training and experience. She's assumed the role of Vice President of Community Impact, in which she expanded the League's fleet of short-term impact projects, resulting in many former men members reinstating their membership in the League. Her service as Vice President of Fundraising and her leadership of members in the HLI Diversity Workshop made contributions to the reaching out statement that we discussed today. She's a consummate men uh, mentor to local youth who are interested in polishing their public skills, spe uh, speaking skills and to women seeking asylum and assistance in writing resumes. Karen has served as a board member to numerous organizations throughout the city Focus on the arts, on education, and youth development, including the Maryland Court Appointed Special Advocates, the Baltimore Museum of Arts Community Advisory Board for the African Art Gallery, and the UB Blake Cultural Center. In 2013, she was recipient of the Junior League of Baltimore's prestigious Annapolis Bowl, which is given to Junior League members who have done exceptional work out in the community. Karen practices her skills in a professional capacity as well, serving her city as the Director of Public Affairs and then the Chief of Staff for Visit Baltimore and other organizations. And I want you to know that she just found out yesterday she has a new job in public relations and public affairs for the utilities company. She is indeed a rising star. Tonight's other rising star is Margaret Nashler of the Junior League of Scranton. Notable among Maggie's characteristics are her compassion for others and a self-depreciating sense of humor. Both have served her exceedingly well during her first years in the league where she says she has learned early on that leadership can be an asset to her community as much or more than direct service, which is so important to us when we think about our mission. Upon her arrival, Maggie worked with other provisionals to develop Know Me, a program that tackles the perils of bullying and low self-esteem among at-risk teen girls through the immersion in the arts. In an offshoot to that program, Maggie chaired the League's beloved Cinderella Closet Initiative, which provides underprivileged girls with the opportunity to find prom dresses and accessories for under $10. Eventually, this program at Cinderella's Closet was spun off to become an independent 501c3. And who did they think should be their inaugural president? Maggie. She expanded its esteemed town series of workshops and invited students to sit on a special board and influence its development while receiving mentoring from community leaders. Maggie's other volunteer commitments include her work with the Jewish Family Services and those in need of mental health services. Morley's mission, where she is engaged in equine therapy for children who suffered abuse or neglect, Project Vitality's playground building mission, and spearheading programming for a local nursing home. Oh, the list goes on. So let's hear for Maggie Nasser, our second Rising Star winner.
now I'd like to welcome Laurel Lee Alexander, outgoing HLI Governance Chair, to the stage. Thank you, Tony. Good evening, everybody. I would like to recognize the leadership development, community impact, public policy and advocacy, and JL Award judges. These talented individuals are recruited from nonprofits and for-profit organizations. Donna Michelle Fields, Sarah Goldberger, Mary Harrison, I almost said Mary Harriman. <laughs> Pat Herlock. Ginger Kent. Francine E. Lynch. Maureen P. Lynott. Monique McClure. Beverly Cooper Newfeld. Molly Wassow Park. Sherry Seward. Anne Barr Thompson. Sandra E. Timmons. Until you serve on one of our judging panels, you cannot imagine, imagine the intensity of the competition, the, challenge in, the challenges inherent in reviewing so many worthy applications, or the abundance of time the judges devote to, to selecting the award winners in a manner that is fair, objective, and independent of the Junior League. Please join me in thanking all of the judges for their hard work and expertise. As we begin, I am going to take a minute to outline a few simple steps that will facilitate the flow of tonight's proceedings. When you hear the name of your league announced, please come to the stage as quickly as possible. You should approach the left side of the stage accept your award, and exit on the right side of the stage. As you exit, be on the lookout for members of the AJLI staff who will provide you with further instructions on where to go for photos later tonight. We are going to start with the JL Awards. The four JL Awards to be presented tonight include Fund Development, Marketing and Communications, Membership, and Vision. The JL Award winners take home $2,000 in cash and a Crystal JL Trophy. The honorable mention recipients receive a cash prize of $500. These awards honor leagues that have developed programs or initiatives that stand out as compelling examples of a response to a very specific need, either within the league or in the community at large. It is my pleasure to now welcome my board colleague, Jody Penn, from the Junior League of Shreveport Bossier. Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to present the JL Award of the Evening for Fund Development. A cornerstone in any league survival is a strategy that turns dollars into meaningful community impact. These strategies, from capital campaigns to endowments, thrift shops, my favorite, and cookbooks, my second favorite, <laughs> galas to holiday markets are as diversified as the leagues themselves. The outcome, however, never wavers. Junior leagues raise money to develop civic leaders who create and execute significant programs that strengthen communities. I'm very pleased to announce that the 2015 Honorable Mention in Fund Development goes to the Junior League of Philadelphia.
just a little bit about their program. With the onset of its centennial in 2011-2012, the league saw an opportunity to launch an aggressive fund development initiative consisting of its first ever capital campaign, part of which would be used to renovate its new headquarters. Following a feasibility study recommending a $1 million goal for renovations, a centennial project, and a public relations plan, the board approved a $1 million capital campaign. During a two-year silent phase, 14 actives and sustainers solicited, pros solicited prospects in person for gifts of $10,000 or more. With $1,175,000 raised and aware that their capital needs were greater, the team entered a public phase in which every member was approached. When it closed in the spring of 2014, the campaign had raised more than $1.4 million. <laughs> all of which came from individuals. 4% originated outside the league. Several tangible outcomes resulted from this work. Headquarters has been renovated and the Apple a Day Healthy Living Initiative, which is the league's centennial project that focuses on access to and education about healthy food, has been funded. In addition, the league was able to invest in public relations and members have taken ownership of fund development, a benefit that lasts. Congratulations to the Junior League of Philadelphia. <laughs> Can it get better than that? Wow. <laughs> so now I'm honored to announce the winner of the 2015 JL Award for Fund Development, the Junior League of San Diego, for creating a multifaceted signature fundraiser. As they make their way to the podium, let me tell you a little bit about their project. To offset the burden felt by many members who traditionally bore the financial responsibility for fundraisers following the 2009 financial downturn, the league decided to reinvent its existing Island Divine event. Held in La Jolla on the day of the Kentucky Derby, the now annual Junior League of San Diego Food and Wine Festival draws chefs from all over the area Welcome. <laughs> and features informational stations where attendees can, dis can discuss the league's focus on youth aging out of foster care. Leveraging media partnerships to increase pre-event exposure, League organizers also gave a greater role to corporate sponsors and partners via year-long contracts. They tackled membership fall-off and addressed inadequate brand awareness in the community. Overall revenue has increased 61%. Corporate sponsorships account for 32% of event revenue. 75% of the ticket sales are to non-members and tickets now sell out prior to the event, and attendance has doubled. Don't leave, I'm not finished. Y'all are not to leave. <laughs> Okay, just a few more things about the Junior League of San Diego. On other fronts, their provisional membership is up, roughly 25% with a year-long waiting list, and media relationships have provided a platform for promoting their league's causes, namely the Conference for Transition Age Youth Stakeholders. Well done, the Junior League of San Diego. I will now present the 2015 JL Award for Marketing and Communications, which recognized the effective planning and execution of a successful marketing communications program or initiative that delivers measurable results. The role of marketing and communications is to gain the support of the community, market the league or league event, 
inform audiences about a league position on a public issue, or establish and improve local media relations. This year, there's no honorable mention. I'm very pleased to announce the JL Award for Marketing and Communications goes to, and I'm so sad that Eileen Goodwin could not be here tonight, the Junior League of San Jose. So the Junior League of San Jose is recognized for its efforts to elevate its visibility and deepen its community's understanding of its rich 47-year legacy of making an impact on San Jose. Intent on being known for something other than its volunteer award luncheons and fundraisers, the league convened an advisory committee to define an impact campaign predicated on the following strategies, integrated marketing via direct and mass outreach, partner events, and fund development initiatives. The target audiences included donors from every sector of the community. To date, still talking, 26,000 individuals were reached by the marketing campaign and a partner and fundraiser programs. Digital and print versions of a direct impact report were distributed. More than $15,000 was raised through affiliation with Silicon Valley Gives the Day, grants, and a giving webpage, and the league ramped up participation in business and community events, including a presentation to 80 Silicon Valley CEOs, a turkey trot, and a presence at STEM functions. In addition, the league improved its efficiency for future endeavors by developing a donor database, messaging, website and social media content, speeches, grant applications, news articles, and testimonials from local leaders. I hope you'll join me in congratulating the Junior League of San Jose, which truly has redefined its value to the local community. This is just amazing. I love this. I will now turn the proceedings over to my friend and colleague, Olivia Thomas, from the Junior League of Collin County after she has recently transferred from the Junior League of Sarasota. Thank you, Jody. It is my pleasure to present this year's JL Award for Membership Development, which recognizes leagues that are reaching out across membership categories to cultivate influential leaders who have the capacity to affect community change and ensure a future of community engagement. This year's honorable mention for membership development goes to the Come On Back Junior League of San Diego. what they've done. The Junior League of San Diego faced numerous challenges, waning membership, high provisional dropout, and stagnant revenue generation. The league established provisional experiences to thwart this disconnectedness in its new, that the newest members were feeling. A traditional curriculum was integrated with an opportunity for them to form 10 to 15 member groups for the purposes of producing 
a mini fundraiser to benefit a community partner. Proceeds were then used for a mini impact program to benefit that community partner. As a result of giving provisionals opportunities for leadership and allowing them to bring their ideas to the league, they understand the mission better and appreciate the necessity of raising funds to invest in that mission. Plus, they take ownership, identify new partners and, and causes, and make social connections too. At the same time, the program helped the league expand its supporter base and build its brand within the community. The Junior League of San Diego raised its provisional graduation rate from roughly 73% to a whopping 92% after implementing the Provisional Experiences Program. The provisional class drew, grew to 153 compared to previous classes of approximately 80. Congratulations to the Junior League of San Diego. So, this year's winner of the Membership Development Award is the Junior League of Yakima, Washington. So let's hear what they did. The League's new member training program, which originated from its participation in the action learning process as an ALT member, had three objectives. Increase new membership, prepare new members to serve their communities immediately, and retain new members. They took a comprehensive approach. They lined up leading outside experts to train new members. They infiltrated the membership committee with members of the nominating and placement committee and vice versa, and installed liaisons who floated between new members and the nominating and placement committee, keeping the lines of leadership orientation communication open. They established a mentoring program for new members that relied on the experience of more seasoned members, and they tasked new members with not only the selection of a focus area, but also with a project all their own. The results of these efforts show nothing less than success. 42 new members joined the roster in 2013-14 and 17 in the 2012-2013 year, constituting a 50% increase in membership in just one year and an expansion of the league's impact on the community. In addition, various new members have already served in leadership positions within the league and the retention rates have improved. Congratulations to the Junior League of Acoma. And now I'll turn the mic over to Alice Gardner Beretta from the Junior League of Calgary, who will be introducing our next award. Thank you, Olivia. A vision describes what a league aspires to be, a picture of the future as they see it. The Vision Award honors leagues that develop outstanding plans that respond to a need, both within the league and at large in the community. It's in the community it serves. Vision ensures the future of the Junior League. 
and gives it an opportunity to flourish as a major force in the development of women volunteers and in community change. The 2015 honorable mention for vision goes to the Junior League of Atlanta. Come on down, Atlanta. Galvanized by a desire to break its city cycle of generational poverty, the League joined forces with Atlanta's leading nonprofits, including the Atlanta Women's Foundation, the Center for Working Families, the Atlanta Civic Site, the United Way of Greater Atlanta, and the Jewish Federation of Greater Atlanta. Together, they formed the Women's Community Leadership Alliance in order to raise awareness of generational poverty, develop a pilot program to address it, and advocate for changes in policy and build WCLA's infrastructure. In 2012, the members of the WCLA were moved by a lecture given by a woman who made a journey to academic success and financial independence after a 28-year battle with homelessness. The speaker sparked the alliance to establish the Community Connection Program, a social networking initiative designed to promote the economic independence of 15 low-income women through individualized training in, the skill, in, in life skills. It is now coaching approximately 30 active participants. Many members of the League have volunteered as members, as mentors, excuse me. The Alliance continued its commitment to its cause when in 2014 it sponsored a breakfast featuring another expert on chronic poverty, whose strategy is to address parents and children together. The WCLA partners invited nearly 400 leaders from all sectors of the community, including business, nonprofits, government, and faith-based organizations. Congratulations, Junior League of Atlanta. This year's Junior League Award for Vision goes to the Junior League of New Orleans. Come on down, New Orleans, come on down. And the award is given to the Junior League of New Orleans for its 2013-2014 strategic planning process. Requirements included that the League develop community impact programming that was measurable, improve member satisfaction, strengthen its brand in the community, and ensure the League's long-term viability by securing its organizational, financial, and operational health. The committee collaborated with stakeholders to analyze strengths and weaknesses, survey the community landscape, and identify opportunities and challenges on the horizon. Under a new theme, Advancing the, well the Well-Being of Women, they first adopted the issue-based community impact model to address women's health, support for their families, and economic opportunities. This endeavor is off to a promising start with a multi-agency diaper initiative. Secondly, the League mounted a successful public relations and marketing campaign to heighten its profile as the leading organization invested in the welfare of the city's women. Lastly, as internal surveys show, members overwhelmingly approved the new strategy. 
The Junior League of New Orleans is an example of the multifaceted creativity of an organization that exists within a larger community to which it enjoys fruitful ties. Advancing the well-being of women is also a model of how an inclusive, holistic approach to, to community needs enhances the member experience and is a, a model for and relevant to other leagues. For this reason, I hope you'll join me in congratulating once more the Junior League of New Orleans. <laughs> And now I'll hand the mic over to Ginny Jarrett, outgoing AGLI treasurer and member of the Junior League of Roanoke Valley, who will present both the Public Policy and Advocacy Award and our Leadership Development Award. Ginny. Thank you, Alice. It's a real thrill to present our newest award, particularly because it's something I believe is integral to our work at the Junior League. The purpose of the Public Policy and Advocacy Award is to recognize a league or group of leagues for their success in using public policy and advocacy as strategies in advancing their community's causes. Successful efforts include those where a league or state public affairs committee, SPAC, has worked to raise awareness, to improve the public policy environment, or to influence legislation through specific league-driven initiatives or programs. The winner of this award will receive $5,000. So it's a pleasure to present the first award in public policy and advocacy to the Junior Leagues of the California State Public Affairs <laughs> Committee. Members to come up. All the presidents and SPAC members, please come up. This award, this award is for its mental health advocacy project, which it began five years ago. The 34 delegates from 17 member leagues, representing more than 10,000 women of the Cal SPAC, conceived of and implemented a long-range plan to broaden awareness and secure statewide legislation to destigmatize women's mental health. Their focus, the pregnancy and postpartum-related disorders that can affect up to 21% of women and their families by way of untreated and undiagnosed depression, anxiety, obsessive-compulsive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, and in very rare instances, psychosis, infant side, and suicide. There are many components to Cal SPAC's initiative, which ultimately resulted in the passage of three different bills. It kicked off, yeah. <laughs> Y'all are phenomenal. It kicked off the highly successful Speak Up When You're Down campaign which raised public awareness of the psychological difficulties of new motherhood via social media, billboards, PSAs, community forums, and a distribution of informative collateral materials. The campaign led to the designation of the month of May as Perinatal Depression Awareness Month and inspired a startup grant for the California Maternal Mental Health Collaborative a nonprofit, the Maternal Mental Health Advocacy Project, established for administrative advocacy. Other outcomes of the initiative include the creation of the Commission on the Status of Maternal Mental Health Care and the investment of resources by healthcare stakeholders 
in the education of women about perinatal depression, risk factors, and triggers. In addition, Breakthrough Alliances led to the formation of the National Coalition, Coalition for Maternal Mental Health, which convenes nonprofits around the country to address the issue and the, and the elimination of barriers to diagnosis and treatment. Partnerships with the Los Angeles County Perinatal Mental Health Task Force, Postpartum Support International, UCSF Medical Center, Homeless Prenatal Program, and Help a Mother Out have been cornerstones of the program. Over time, the project's focus has evolved from legislative advocacy and awareness building to capacity building through stakeholder encouragement and volunteer participation, always with an eye on sustainable change. Today, Advocacy Project continues with the 2020 Mom Project, which sets forth tactical steps for hospitals and providers to improve awareness nationally and with the training of nearly 500 healthcare providers via a web-based maternal mental health certificate program. Please join me in congratulating the California Public Affairs <laughs> Committee. Our celebration tonight continues with the prestigious Leadership Development and Community Impact Awards. These two awards throw a spotlight on two essential elements at the heart of our mission, women's leadership and enhancing the quality of life in a community in a way that is profound and lasting. It is my honor to now present the 2015 Junior League Leadership Development Award. Leadership development is central to our mission, developing the potential of women and improving communities through the effective action and leadership of trained volunteers. The Leadership Development Award recognizes a league's exemplary member training and development program and comes with a $10,000 cash award. The winner of this year's Leadership Development Award is the Junior League of Memphis. Memphis Design LEAD, Leaders Evolving and Developing Program to provide education and development opportunities to men and women who serve the Memphis community as well as members of the league interested in pursuing positions of leadership. Recognizing the staggering number of nonprofits in the surrounding community in need of qualified skilled leadership, the league retooled and expanded its existing program known as Leadership Certification. certification and opened up enrollment to members and non-members alike. LEAD sets the league apart from other organizations in that its sessions are taught by individuals who are not only qualified in education, but also who have had experience putting their lessons to the test in the real world. Taught in two-hour increments over the course of 10 weeks, the curriculum covers essential applicable topics such as nonprofit leadership, technology, communication, teamwork, personal and organizational branding, life-work balance, we all need that, decision-making, <laughs> networking, and delegation. Qualified facilitators ask questions that stimulate reflection and discussion, and the content is updated annually by the lead chair and committee. At the conclusion of the course, 
participants who have been surveyed have praised the program and indicated they would definitely recommend it to others. In the last four years, LEAD has served as an affordable professional development opportunity for 150 nonprofit leaders in the Memphis community who together form a network of colleagues, advisors, and friends who help each other navigate the nonprofit leadership landscape. Please help me congratulate the Junior League of Memphis. I now have the distinct honor of introducing Donna Michelle Fields, National Program Manager of Colgate's Bright Smiles, Bright Futures, who will present the last awards of the evening, the Colgate Bright Smiles, Bright Futures Community Impact Awards. Thanks to Colgate's extraordinary generosity and multi-year commitment to the Junior League, we will be able to give two Community Impact Awards for the next three years in celebration of the work leagues perform in their communities in concert with local partners to achieve measurable results, thereby changing the world one community at a time. With deep gratitude and without further ado, Donna Michelle Fields. Thank you so much, and I want to thank the Junior League for giving us an opportunity, meaning Colgate Palmolive and myself, to present, to present an awards that mean so much to us um, as our vision as we move forward in this world. So let me get to it. Our first winner tonight is the Junior League of Boca Raton. As they make their way here, they're on their way. You can give them a little round of applause. So let me tell you a little bit about them. A few years ago, the league was moved by the finding that one in three families nationally are unable to provide diapers for their children and more than 200,000 families living in their very own community needed them on a regular basis. The league formed a task force that found that a family needs nearly $1,000 annually to cover the cost of diapers or 4% of poverty threshold income. To meet this need, they founded the Boca Raton Diaper Bank, currently the only provider of its kind in South Palm Beach County. Run by a committee, of twin, run by a committee that vets its 21 partner agencies for screening families, handles logistics, arranges in-kind storage, and ensures that low-income families in South Palm Beach and North Broward counties receive 50 diapers per child per month. The league was built, the league has built awareness of the challenges faced by underprivileged families by persuading Boca Raton Mayor Susan Wetchell to declare a Diaper Awareness Day and securing recognition from Florida Governor Rick Scott. In addition, the league has advocated the advocated for the inclusion of diapers in public policy's definition of basic human needs. Since its founding in 2011, the award-winning Diaper Bank has experienced significant growth. To date, some 600,000 diapers have been provided, and in August 2014, the bank made its largest monthly distribution to date, supplying 14 agencies with more than 40,000 diapers. Please join me in congratulating the boat the Junior League of Boca Raton. Ooh, I like this. 
This year's second community impact award goes to the Junior League of Fort Worth. According to a study by the Community Foundation of North Texas, 45% of former inmates, those resettled in Como, Fourth Worth's inner city neighborhood, relapsed into criminal behavior or reincarcerated. In this zip code, ravaged by poverty, racism, crime, and an alarming rate of recidivism, 25% of households are headed by single mothers, and 42% live below the poverty line. By, crop, by contrast, only 9% of households in surrounding Fort Worth are run by single mothers and only 21% live in poverty. Shelter, safety, education, and hope were the ingredients essential to guiding Como residents toward a bright future. The League found a partner in a nonprofit called Opening Doors for Women in Need. Those central whose central mission is to empower women to become independent providers for their families. Together, the partners rolled out a two-part plan. The league provided $40,000 for the Nehemiah Project, which re rehabilitated a vacant building for opening doors for women in need clients, and then $75,000 to build a, four, a new four-bedroom facility known as the House the Junior League built on an empty lot owned by a nonprofit. In addition, the league placed 25 volunteers who gave a total of 1,250 hours their time, of their time in job search and interview, and interview training, clothing drives, and community garden maintenance, as well as cultural excursions. To date, nearly 20 women have received or are receiving training in the program. Let's put our hands together for the Junior League of Fourth World. Thank you again, Donna, and congratulations to all of the leagues that have been recognized here tonight. This was so exciting, so fun. And thank you for being such a fabulous audience. This was great. Now, um, we're reaching the end of our program, and I will say it's hard to believe that one year ago, I was standing here as incoming president of AJLI. Leadership is about stewardship, so I am so pleased that during my second year in office, I will have an extraordinarily accomplished president-elect, Carol Scott, by my side. Carol, please come up to the stage. Now many of you have met Carol or have known Carol over the years. It's wonderful that many of her pals from the AJLI board days are here to cheer her on this evening. Very happy to have you with us. Carol is a past president of the Junior League of Pasadena. <laughs> 
she has people. <laughs> she's a former member of the AJLI board, where she served as secretary. She's been a consultant in the areas of leadership, fundraising, management, governance. She's got so much to offer to the association, and it's really thrilling that Carol is going to be joining us on the board as the president-elect. But there are a few things you may not know about Carol. <laughs> These people know all her secrets, I can tell. We're going to ply you with liquor. Yeah. <laughs> you put your head down and take a nap, okay? <laughs> so we thought we would uh, give you a chance to learn a little bit about Carol and about me. And so I will begin. My hometown is Brantford, Connecticut. This week, my hometown is Burbank. <laughs> Carol has had many hometowns over the years. Yes. Um, I have four siblings, two brothers and two sisters. I have two brothers who are twins, and I'm so thrilled that my brother Roland is here this evening, and my sister-in-law Monica. My favorite junior league placement, well, I have a soft spot in my heart for my very first placement, which was working at the Co Community Legal Services Office, part of the Legal Aid Society in Harlem in New York, helping women who were victims of domestic violence to get divorces. I am sure I'm going to get in trouble for this, but my favorite Junior League placement was actually my first as a provisional in the Junior League of Dallas, and it was called Dallas Living Place. Oh. Oh, is that me? Okay. You should, this is supposed to be simple, you told me. <laughs> I've already screwed it up. I have two children, and they're both here tonight. Melinda, who's been a delegate all week. And Matthew. Can I introduce my husband? Yes. And I really have to say that my partner and major support and champion, Mark Scott's here too. How cute is that? I have two stepsons who I'm crazy about. They're grown up. One lives in Boston and one lives in Toronto. I work at Fiduciary Trust Company International in New York. This week, <laughs> I am an independent consultant for nonprofits. <laughs> Excellent. My favorite color is red. My favorite color is blue. So I think Berkman would say that we make a good team. Yes. Actually, my favorite Berkman color is blue, though. Oh, thank you, Carol. Okay. <laughs> I have two cats, Max and Snugglepuss. I have two dogs, my Westie Oscar and my Havanese Zoe. And my favorite vacation was a trip to Maui just two years ago. Oh, that's so nice. I love animals, and my husband and I took an amazing cruise to Antarctica where we saw all kinds of fascinating animals, seals, porpoises, amazing, lots of fun. So that's just a little bit about Carol and myself, and... We are so thrilled to be working together and serving the leagues on the association board for the coming year. So thank you so much, Carol, for saying yes. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> I now invite Executive Director Susan Danish to come up to the stage. Thank you, Ellen. 
The 93rd Annual Conference is coming to a close, but I'm not quite ready. So at this time, I would like to acknowledge and thank the headquarters team that has worked so hard behind and in front of the scenes to make this conference a reality. And those of you who know me know I don't just stop with saying thank you, so thank you to Ann Dalton and Maureen Mackey, Lori Dodge, Juwan Che, Janine Lesser, Pamela Antoine Weeks, Karen Assad, Jackie Baez, Dave Burkita, Susan Chavez, Thomas Dilworth, John Downey, Becky Fleischer, Delacia Gittens, Michelle Gorenstein, Myra Guevara, Lexi Higgins, Carrie Holmes, Susan, Lin <laughs> Susan Lindeen, Pam Mosley, Nico Nawalani, Reshma Pere, Inez Sucre, Ann Tishkoff, Karina Weinstein, and a very special thank you to our small but mighty meeting management team, Rob Steo, Meg McConnell, and last but never least, the incomparable Dee Brinkley. Now, I am now going to get in trouble because when we're at conferences, we all work for D. So I know I'm going to hear about this later. D, would you please come up here now? And let me just say while D is on her way up here, saying nasty things about me under her breath. Since 1998, since 1998, D has been the wizard behind every single Junior League conference. Six conferences per year, and three additional freestanding AJLI Board of Directors meetings, and one or two additional nominating and governance committee meetings, which means that there is an AJLI-related conference or meeting one month every year. I mean. <laughs> Once a month every year. <laughs> as delegates, you don't see her as often or as present as you see me or Ann Dalton, Janine, or Jawan. But she is there. And she has worked heroically to give you a great experience. If your league has been a site city league, you know the great efforts that she has made to make sure that your conference, our conference in your city, really reflects the vision that you have of what you would like delegates to experience. If you've ever had a problem, D has been there. As a delegate, if you've had a problem, you go to D, she fixes it. D is retiring. Yes, <laughs> Susan. And this is her last official AJLI conference. And even knowing that, was still thinking about what was new and what she could do to make this conference better. So it was even silly little things like, we're going to be in Hollywood, let's have glow sticks that are stars. <laughs> or 
I thought I had a brilliant idea. I went running into, into her office several weeks ago. And I said, wouldn't it be great if we did one of these like Hollywood photo taking places, you know, where they have the logo on the back and the red carpet? And she let me finish my bright idea. And then she said, Susan, I've already done that. <laughs> She's a fierce negotiator who has always had our very best interests at heart. So the good news is that although this is Dee's last conference, she's still going to be with us part-time for the next year to facilitate a really smooth transition as we go to a combination of internal staff and outsourced meeting management. But I wanted to take just this brief moment in front of everyone to tell you that she has made a tremendous difference here at AJLI, and we are all going to miss her. Thank you. I told you I'm not nothing. I don't want to go there. Thank you. Thank you. I see you got Delta colors here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Do you want to say something? Yeah. <laughs> now, I told Susan that I did not want anything to happen. But I knew that she was gonna do it anyway, but I really wasn't prepared for this to happen this way. But I really have appreciated working with the Junior League. I started as a consultant, I end as a consultant. And I really, really have enjoyed all of you, particularly all of the cities that I have visited, all of you that I see out here in the audience, some that I've seen, I saw one person, it was 10 years ago that we really saw each other. However, we never forget. So I wish all of you the best as we continue to make a difference in all communities, okay? Thank you. And I must say, these are roses and they're Delta colors, all right? Okay, you got it? Delta Sigma Theta. <laughs> I have one last little thing to say to Dee. Not only are those Delta colors, but those are Junior League colors, too. <laughs> okay, and very finally, I want to also thank our many trainers and consultants who've helped us at this conference, our wonderful photographer, John Crum, and our multimedia team, who you really don't see because they are the wizards behind the screen, Richard Altman and Mark Miller, for their hard work throughout the conference. On behalf of the headquarters team, thank you so much to each and every one of you for giving us the opportunity that we have to do work that we love for all of you every single day. And now I really will turn things back to Ellen. Thank you, Susan. Susan is so amazing, and we all know that none of this would happen without Susan. She makes such an effort, pays attention to every little detail, makes it all look so easy and so effortless. And Susan, we couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much for everything. And now, as our time together in Los Angeles draws to a close, I thank you all for coming and for your enthusiasm in living out our collective vision of the Junior League women around the world as catalysts for lasting community change. Now, the chair calls on the delegate from the Junior League of St. Louis, who joins us by video, as she had to leave early today to be at her league's largest fundraiser tonight, celebrating their 100th anniversary. Good evening. My name is Allie Chang Ray, and I am president of the Junior League of St. Louis. I can't believe it's been nearly a year since we had the privilege of welcoming you. Congratulations to the Junior League of Los Angeles for a job superbly done 
as this year's host city for annual conference. We are deeply grateful and we hope you cherish the experience as we do in St. Louis. The chair now calls on the delegate from the Junior League of Los Angeles. So ladies, did you all have a fabulous time? <laughs> so on behalf of the host committee and the Junior League of Los Angeles and all of our volunteers and our staff, we just want to thank you all for being a fabulous, but fabulous um, attendees for our um, conference here. We are just so excited and appreciative of all the kind words that you've given us over the last few days, and we appreciate your enthusiasm. And we're just so delighted to have the opportunity to host you over these last few days. So thank you very much. Can I call Atlanta up here? Can I call Atlanta up here? I would like to call the delegates from Atlanta up here. We have a special gift for you. There's a tradition in Junior League when you host the annual conference you quote, pass the torch. And we figured since you were in LA, this might be the only time that you would get an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we have three trophies for them and the Oscar that they will be getting, it's for best team. And that was the lesson that we really learned through this experience. Utilize your team, not only your committee, but your office staff, the board, and reach out to your sustainers Engage everyone. If you do that, you will have a winning conference. So ladies, come get that. Okay. And I think most importantly, we all know it's so important to celebrate your successes. So here is some champagne. <laughs> Well, first, another thank you to the Junior League of Los Angeles for being such gracious hosts. And we are excited to host the 94th AJLI Annual Conference in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta is the home of Southern ladies that are pretty in paint, perfect in pearls, and we know everyone loves a monogram girl. <laughs> Where football is religion, everyone blesses your heart, and sweet tea is the house wine of the South. We are also home to 3,500 Junior League of Atlanta women who donate 35,000 hours of service every year to more than 700,000 women and children. We work together to fight human trafficking, generational poverty, and early childhood education. Now, when you arrive in Atlanta, you will enjoy our Southern cuisine that includes corn on the cob, cornbread, cornbread collard greens, and pecan pie. <laughs> fried chicken, fried okra, fried hush puppies. <laughs> there really isn't anything you can't fry. You will also enjoy the incredible Center for Civil and Human Rights at the Georgia Aquarium. The world of Coke, leave your Pepsi at home. <laughs> and our newest addition, the College Football Hall of Fame. Georgia is also the birthplace of pretty famous people. LA, like we have Julia Roberts, 
Ray Charles, Burt Reynolds, Holly Hunter, and Lawrence Fishburne. And we have filmed major movies like Driving Miss Daisy, My Cousin Vinny, and Sweet Home Alabama. Sorry, Sorry Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> it is also the birthplace of Nobel Prize winner Martin Luther King Jr. and Pulitzer Prize winner Alice Walker. As well as Jimmy Carter, former past governor of Georgia and the 39th president of the United States of America, as well as Girl Scouts founder Juliet gordon Lowe. So now that Georgia is on your mind, we hope that you will join us at the 94th AJLI Annual Conference. See y'all in Atlanta! All right, exit left. Welcome to Atlanta. We're here to ensure that your visit is unforgettable. Let's explore. Everything ready for you. Experience our history and culture. We have something special planned for you. from dusk till dawn. We appreciate you choosing Atlanta and look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you, Junior League of Atlanta. Sounds like we've got a lot to look forward to next year. Cannot wait. So I would like to, just before we close, remind all of the award winners tonight and the anniversary leagues that a photo session and reception will be held in your honor immediately following the close of this ceremony in the green room. This concludes the 93rd AJLI Annual Conference. I wish all of you the very best and hope that our paths will cross again soon. Good night everyone and safe travels home.